Hello, and welcome to Defy Robotics! <clears throat> and and friends! friends. <laughs> So, we've made a lot of progress on the robot since our working blueprint. First, we basically did a full hardware overhaul, fixing three major issues. First, the wiring was pretty fairly temporary at blueprint, and since, since then we had to do a full rewire to make it more robust because it kept breaking, so it was very difficult. Second, the motors were not receiving proper current from the driver, and thus were having trouble on high friction surface turns. So we replaced it with uh, two drivers to provide more current. Finally, we basically ran out of pins. Most of our pins on the Arduino were devoted to driving the motors. So we broke this out to two boards. Now we have an onboard uh, Arduino that controls the motors, and another one that communicates with the sensors and the controller. These two boards communicate over I2C, which allows for efficient communication between, taking up only two pins, giving us more space for sensors in the future. Then looking at the software side, using this ultrasonic sensor, we uh, do the normal ultrasonic thing, send a signal, receive it, clock that time, and then we turn that value into a uh, number in a five-point scale, and then over radio we send that to the glove. Um, so as Ben was talking about the five-point scale, we get the five-point scale from the ultrasonics, and then we switch it into a haptic feedback. Haptic feedback, we have haptic order for it, essentially means vibration. The vibration gets to the user, it's a uh, feedback that essentially allows it to direct and knows, oh, I get into an object, say a wall, and not bump into it. So, just like any RC car, we're using radio to communicate between the controller mounted on the glove and the receiver mounted on the robot. We use a 900 megahertz packet radio for this communication. So, the way we have it currently set up allows for two-way communication between the rover and the glove. So, um, the way it starts is we uh, the Arduino mounted on the glove interprets the joystick data and then it compiles it in, into, uh, into a character array in a systematic format. It sends it over to the rover and where it is then parsed using a, a, an algorithm and then that information is then fed to the motors to make the rover move in a certain direction. Immediately after it does that, it gets a distance measurement from the ultrasonic sensor, and using the same method, it transmits it to back to the glove, where it is used to control the haptics using a five-point scale, as you've all then mentioned. Uh, so a little bit about the glove, we wanted to create something that would be part of the hand, something of extension your, of your own body. It's very nice. Uh, when we cut it in the middle, it's used to fray, uh, so we had to essentially fuse it together but then it did, because it's cheap plastic, it's used to add the coating on the glove, used to make a little brownish, not nice color. Uh, a little bit I2C is essentially a way of communication between two devices. We have the master device and the slave devices. This master device can spread and uh, separate its instructions into all the other devices. It's very useful, especially in our case, uh, because it allows us to use um, many, many caps without essentially creating these wired communication. I2C is a wired communication. Also, uh, something we thought about that didn't happen is it doesn't interfere with each other, which in Blueprint we thought was the problem, and it, it, it wasn't. <laughs> Speaking more to the future of the project, next steps, what we did was we implemented button functionality. So we, as you can see, we have some buttons on the <laughs> goblet here. And what we've done is we take the button information, whether or not a button is pressed, and then we uh, append it onto the existing packet that's being sent back and forth from the rover to the gauntlet. And, and yeah, that can be used to uh, turn on lights, uh, you, uh, move servos, or trigger semi-autonomous behavior. Yeah, speaking more to gyros, so this is gyro sensor. And uh, we, uh, it can be used in several ways, but uh, something that was particularly interesting was to mount it onto the gauntlet and then uh, uh, we then get the orientations and movements from the glove and we translate that into uh, directions uh, or positions for the rover to move to. So it's more of an extension of you. And another interesting idea is to use it to augment existing teleop behavior by having it mounted onto the rover. And um, this way it can uh, more consistently um, uh, turn and uh, move using 
um, uh, PID algorithms on uh, flows with different fr uh, friction coefficients. So then our third and final next step that we're thinking about is the possibility of synchronization of the signals. So currently we're just using a very simple echo system where the rover will receive a signal from the glove and then we'll send a signal back and that's it. So the issue with this is that means that the sensory data is really inconsistent as if you're not actually putting anything as an input in the glove, nothing's going to happen. So to make this more effective, we will then have a uh, set periodicity with them at a different offset. In that way, they'll take turns sending signals back and forth, allowing them to then get all the sensory data effectively. Thank you, and see you next time on Defy Robotics and, and Friends. friends. <laughs>